Okay, today I would really like to, if possible, get the hull red on the hull of the hood. I don't know what's going to happen because we got badly sidetracked with this thing about is Windex harmful to your airbrush? Now I know on, on the internet you'll hear people use the word destroy. There's a, there's a whole big difference between being destroyed and being harmful. And I'm more concerned about it being harmful because I don't think it will destroy it, but that's just my opinion. Uh, yeah, it might be harmful. Anyway, I've taken one of uh, Tennessee Jim's mini Q-tips here and I stuck it up the nozzle. And I was, the reason I did that is because at the end of yesterday's episode when I was editing it out, I was noticing that, <clears throat> excuse me, some places the there seemed to be oxidation and some places there didn't. And I thought, well, how could, how could that be? Because the whole thing is brass. And I was thinking, well, maybe because I was handling it, I was getting grease from my fingers all over the sides in some places more than others. And then I remembered that when I was trying to fish it out of this little jar and I, and I spent quite a bit of time doing it, I cut that out. <laughs> anyway, I probably spent about Oh, I guess maybe two minutes with the tweezers trying to pick it out and it kept slipping off. And I think what I was doing was I was I was scraping the 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 oxidation off of the side. I don't want to be touching it. Uh, that's the whole idea. I want it to be, you know, the way it came out of the out of the jar here yesterday. Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know how this is going to go. I haven't I haven't uh, looked at this stuff yet. I don't know if I'm going to even be able to show you. Uh, anything. Uh, if I can, I'll put my adapter on that camera and uh, we'll, we'll put it in this microscope here and I might be able to show you something but in all likelihood you're not going to see nothing. Now I will. I'll, I'll tell you if there's oxidation visible on on this or not. This is on the brass tube. Uh, anyway, enough rambling here. Let's get on with it. Now I I don't want to be wasting too much time at this. I'm I'm at a place where it was near the near where the uh, solution stopped and no solution started, and kind of like where one of the little bubbles was, right at the very top of the solution, and I am seeing what appears to be. Uh, well, it's not metal, and it's it's not uh, like a varnish. It's it's definitely something has has built up on there, and I'll, I'll uh, try and put the macro lens on, and we'll move in on this spot. And if that doesn't work, then maybe I'll see if I can use the other microscope and uh, with the adapter, and uh, we might I might be able to show you, but. Uh, I probably can't, so don't get your hopes up. Okay, now that thing that you're looking at right in the center there, that round area, um, that's where I'm looking with the microscope right now. And I'm seeing what almost looks like rust. Now, of course, it's it's not going to be rust. It's because, uh, well, maybe it's brass rust. Anyway, it has oxidized more in some places than in others. Uh, it seems that where the uh, transition was from air to uh, Windex, it reacted the most. But nevertheless, it did react and there is something on there. Um, okay, now let's take a look at the nozzle. Right now I am concentrating on the area where the titanium tip has been pressed into the uh, brass part. And yes, I am seeing what appears to be some sort of oxidation. So something is forming on the brass from the Windex, as far as I am concerned. I don't know what else it could be. I mean, we soaked it in Windex, and yeah, it's that there is something on there. Okay. Now I am not looking through this through my microscope right now. I've just sort of repositioned it so I can rotate it so you can see it better. 
Um, at least I'm hoping you can. Now I think we have beat this to death. I, uh, I am going to try and make it very clear. I am not saying that Windex will destroy your airbrush, but I am saying it could be harmful to your airbrush. I am also saying I will not be using it to clean my airbrush. However, I will be using it to clean my paintbrush. It does a wonderful job on paintbrushes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Yeah, I, t I tend to go overboard when I do stuff like this, don't I? Anyway, <laughs> let's see if we can paint the hull red. Okay, I know I said we were going to quit on this, but I'd forgotten about this little piece of chromed uh, brass here. And uh, what I'm looking at is I'm, I'm, not, I'm not seeing anything on the chrome itself, on the outside. Uh, there is no uh, oxidation whatsoever anywhere. No stains, no nothing. But I'm looking at, with the microscope, by looking straight down on it, I'm looking at the sides of the inside of the hole. And I am seeing what appears to be where the chrome starts and the brass, brass is bare. There does seem to be some sort of pitting and oxidation going on there. I can't see it real well. All I can say is it, it doesn't look like something that's supposed to be there. I got a comment from one of the viewers and his thinking was if you're going to be rinsing the Windex off of your airbrush as soon as you're through cleaning it, would it really do any harm? And my uneducated answer to that is probably none. I think it's probably fine. Uh, but I don't know. I know what it will do to brass uh, over a period of time, but you know, uh, I'm still not going to be using the Windex on my airbrush. I'm, I'm not saying go ahead and use it. Some people do, some people don't apparently. Uh, I'm not going to. The reply back to him I gave went something like this. Well, if I have to use, uh, you know, another solution to uh, rinse off my airbrush after I'm through with the Windex, I might as well use a solution I don't have to bother rinsing off. And that's isopropyl alcohol, which is what I've been using for the last year and a half. However, I got to thinking, does the isopropyl affect brass? And that's what this is all about. So, okay, now let's leave our well-burnished brass tube in the isopropyl the same way we did it in the Windex. No more and no less. And we'll check it out tomorrow, see what we got. I really don't know what's going to happen. I never really thought about it until I read that comment. This is your fault, Vic. <laughs> okay, we're going to be wanting to put our hull red on the bottom half. And that means we're going to have to mask off the top half so that it doesn't get uh, all red on it. I was thinking my wide green tape here would probably just one swath that go right up the side. And yes, it would. But then I was remembering how this, they say, has less of a tendency to pull your paint off when you remove it. So even though it, well, it, it almost goes all the way. I suppose I could, yeah, it almost goes all the way. Now, I am going to have to be careful that I'm not, you know, bumping around here on this because, as I mentioned earlier, this flat gray marks so incredibly easy. Uh, you almost just, you just, just brush against it and you can see it. So, it, you know, I'm going to want to watch where it presses against the gunnel here on the side that it's not going to be... Uh, you know, rubbing the paint off. Anyway, I think we'll just turn it up on its edge here and very, very carefully. Now, I don't want to be sliding it around on the cloth, which is going to be kind of hard to do as I'm working with this. I'm going to be wanting to put the tape along like this. And if I'm sliding the 
the uh, hull against the cloth, even though it is very soft, it will rub the, the paint off. Um, I'm having a, more of a, of a hard time, it seems, with this hull than I had with the, with the Bismarck. I, I don't know why. Mind you, a year and a half has gone past, so was, you know, things change. Okay, I think we're about ready to s turn it over and spray here. Uh, it doesn't have to be sealed real good here. Where the seal has to be good is right here. Now I realize that we could probably flip the hull over and pretty well paint, I was going to say all of it from if it was upside down, except for the fact that there is so much detail, like this, this, uh, uh, I guess it'd be sort of a rubbing rail or whatever you call it. It's, and also this keel on keel on the bottom here, and then there's the the tops of the uh, shaft supports, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we're going to be looking down on like this because this is the way we're going to look down on the ship. We're not going to be looking at it from the other side. So I'm going to want to do probably, uh, I'm, I'm guessing probably about a third of the spraying at this angle here. Um, maybe we'll be lifting it up a little bit here. Okay, something, something like this. I could still spray down. And, and in like this. Then after we get the sides done, then we flip it over and do the bottom. The bottom isn't really going to be that seen actually. It's just going to be from about here up. Um, anyway, I think that's going to have to be tomorrow though. I, I know that it's early enough. I could probably do part of it today. But uh, as I've said so many times in the past, uh, you know, if you're pushing it, and it's, then it doesn't become fun anymore. And I want to, like I say, I want to keep this fun. I know I had planned to spray, and but you know, uh, we got we got ourselves badly sidetracked with the airbrush and Windex experiment, and uh, that wasn't your fault. That's my fault. But you know, that's that's the way it goes. You know, they say the uh, life is what happens to you while you're making other plans, and I had planned to do this today, and well life happened. <laughs> Thanks for watching and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.